Hello, welcome to the Scroll Ensemble Classical Music Improvisation Channel. I'm Robert and this week I want to do an evaluation of an improvisation, namely my own. I will discuss the following things. 1. The situation, style and approach. 2. The right notes. 3. How am I doing fulfilling my role, which was to accompany a singer. And finally, 4. Musical interest. Melody, harmony, rhythm and structure. It was quite difficult to uh, talk about it, so it took me <laughs> a month to actually do the transcription and do the video because I kept putting it off out of fear of what I might find. It might be an idea to first listen to the recording and then see what you think uh, of my thoughts in, later in the video, rather than me influencing your listening before you've even listened to it yourself. There are links in the description and also you could click here to go to the recording directly. I recorded this at the end of 2021 with Ensemble Camerata Trajectina and the CD came out a few months ago. This group calls themselves the Musical Memory of the Netherlands and this particular disc focuses on Dutch political song culture around 1800. There was also a very interesting researcher involved. In case you are curious about them, the ensemble, I actually did one of my first interviews with member Saskia Kolen, where we also discussed the ensemble. And you can watch the interview by clicking above me. The song that I'm discussing today is called Op de Aristocraten from 1795. Its melody was taken from the French revolutionary song Saira and it celebrates a victory. As is usual with these songs, we mostly have their melodies, but no particular accompaniments. So Vaughan Schlepp wrote a piano accompaniment and he was also the pianist. And I was asked to add an oboe part which I then decided to do improvise. Stylistically, this is slightly strange because the oboe doesn't often accompany a voice in this kind of setting. In fact, I could only find one song for oboe, piano and voice from around that time. And even in the 19th century, I could only find two more songs and often it's advertised for oboe or clarinet or flute. So, um, maybe only for the oboe if they can play like a clarinet or a flute. In these songs, the oboe does not play much with the voice, but mostly does interludes or, or little, little accompanimental things. But the song we recorded isn't really structured that way. And its simplicity kind of precludes adding interludes and arranging it into a more elaborate form. Another element is that these songs were mostly sung and played at home by amateurs. And generally speaking, the oboe wasn't much of an amateur instrument. Nevertheless, it's great to take ideas from the past and then do our own thing with them. So I did, and I did decide to accompany the singer on the oboe. And you might wonder, were amateurs able to improvise accompaniments or improvise at all? This video discusses such an amateur, Mr. Hadrava, and Tartini writes in his treatise about so-called natural modes, ornaments that musically inclined but untrained people would sing or whistle in the streets on famous songs. And you can find out more about that treatise here. And also nowadays we see people adding counterpoints in contemporary styles to others' songs on, for example, TikTok or YouTube. I also added a little prelude, which I think uh, is stylistically appropriate. Solo preludes to various types of pieces were definitely a thing on wind instruments. I would have liked it to be a bit longer, but time constraints and also, you know, this was not my CD, uh, so I decided to only do a little intro of four bars, which is also nicely mirrored by an outro of similar length uh, at the end of the song, so maybe it even makes sense. On top of that, we find a four bar prelude on the oboe, with a little piano accompaniment, in the end of 18th century example for oboe, piano and voice that I talked about before. 
There will be more videos on preludes and 19th century improvisation in a few months, as I am preparing for a talk on 19th century solos for winds in Italy in November. The approach was relatively simple, nothing to write home about. There was a written song and a written out accompaniment, and I wrote down some guidelines for the cadences, as these were often only sounding nicely with a few options, and only a few options of those were easily played on the oboe. Um, other than that, there were a few 6-4 chords, uh, like this one, that I had to really put into my system. You could wonder, is it really that important to play the right notes? It's improvisation after all. But I think because I'm trying to improvise in a certain style, this does matter. To check the notes, I made a transcription and it was very interesting to make that transcription to see my own improvisation rather confronting. You can find the full transcription on Patreon if you wanted to join us there. Of course, I don't know exactly what happened in editing, but I seemed to have done quite well enough of the time. I took some license in this sort of B part with this D flat, but this is fitting with the style. Here I did play an A flat where the accompaniment is playing an A natural. It's probably fine because it's a fast note, but obviously it's not correct and if I've had a choice, I would probably not play that note there. For me, the most interesting thing was to stay true to the simplicity of the song and despite being a loud oboe, to stay in the background. I tried to do this by not improvising too many notes, but hopefully just enough to keep the musical interest in my part as well. I think that went quite well, although I will dis discuss the interest part later, uh, and found mostly harmonious note with the vocal part, doing small rhythmical things, but nothing too complicated or distracting. There are two moments where the singer, the wonderful Nico van der Meel, goes all out, and I wish that I would have reacted well at all, or in the second moment quicker to his beautiful outburst. I think I was not open enough there, still a bit too busy with doing the right thing. In general, my melodies are quite nice, even on their own. My biggest issue is with the outro in the first and second verse. There's no voice, and so there's no need to stick around that E flat all the time. And there are many other nice options, so. Why? There is also the similar middle bit where I just stay on the F. It works quite nicely with the singer, but why did I do that every verse? There are simple other options that could have stayed in the background but been more diverse melodically. Finally, uh, the cadences are clearly more premeditated than the rest, and therefore also quite similar all the time. So I should have had at least one more option or been able to vary them more based on that basic structure. Looking at it now again, even, it seems like there are indeed more options than I had previously thought, just at the time didn't seem to have seen them. The second verse is melodically the weakest, but as I will discuss later, it sort of makes up for that uh, with the rhythm. The third verse is strongest in my opinion, or at least most varied. And I wonder whether the contrast with the second verse melodically being rather sparse might work as a way to vary between verses to kind of make that structure. But I think this second verse really could have done with more melodic variation. What do you think? Clearly, the B part inspired me, as I think those bars have the nicest ideas. It would have been nice to take some of those ideas from my improvisation into the rest of the piece. For example, some more chromaticism would have been nice, and also typical of the style. It would have spiced up the melody a bit more, 
as some appoggiaturas could have as well. Interestingly, the two oboe accompaniments that I did find from more or less that time are also rather simple, especially rhythmically, but they definitely have some more chromatic juices. Harmonically, the song is very simple and it's not up to my part to change that, I think. Again, I like the B part ideas the most because something is at least happening there in the harmony and I can then do nice things with that. At the same time, I could have sometimes played more arpeggios in my part, delineating the harmony. <laughs> Although it's not super typical for oboe writing, and the piano is doing quite some of it, I think it would have really helped get a bit out of the melodic rut of the dum ta da dum ta da dum ta da dum Weg met de zoon, met de neef, met de knecht On the other hand, the song melody is also very static in a similar way, so perhaps if I had done too much jumping around, I would have started outdoing the vocal part. Rhythmically, I like the idea in the second verse, answering the typical motif half a beat later. Nu wordt het loon aan verdienste gehecht. I'm not sure it works throughout the whole verse, though. Uh, there is a nice cheeky little variation here, but I could have done more with similar ideas. Nu wordt het loon aan verdienste gehecht. Or perhaps a slowed down version, or a version with rests. Bada, bada, bada. Now, too often I play similar rhythms to the melody and I think it becomes a bit annoying after a while. I do like this idea, for example, which there could have just been more of. Or why not some more continuing sixteenths for one variation or part of the variation, especially where the melody is so static. I think I'm a bit better at this now, after going through Quantz's ornamentation pedagogy, you can still apply for the July course to learn more yourself um, with all these wonderful rhythmic and harmonic variations through the link in the description. This is the element I always find hardest as I'm a very in the moment type person and some random ideas always pop up in my head and they're hard to ignore. I think generally the larger structure is nice, with the third verse being the most interesting and elaborate, and the second verse focusing on that offbeat motif. As this song itself doesn't have too many character changes, I think it doesn't make so much sense to then do more of that in my part. But rhythmical profiling, for example, for the first verse could have helped the structure. I think within the verses there could have been a bit more build up or down or maybe also some clearer choices in rhythmical ideas that then could have had consequences for the following choices and in that way build up a structure. Now sometimes I just kind of stay with a similar idea in a kind of uh, baroque prelude type way, which is maybe not what I would have wanted here. Um, and especially I could have reacted more to the vocal part being more or less. The song is also quite square structurally, and I play along with that. But maybe I could have sometimes made that more opaque with a little bridge or a slightly different phrasing. All in all, I would love to do more of this. It was a very interesting experience. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And if you liked it, and if you feel so inclined, feel free to like the video, subscribe, or join us on Patreon, or uh, share the video. Let us know your thoughts and see you in the next video. Waken wij dan met nieuwe moed voor het onbeerdelijk goed om ons na kroost na te laten. Vrijheid is het edelzoen.